Council Member Eaton. Here. Commissioner Colvin Garcia. Here. Commissioner Hookham. Here. Commissioner Mursky. Here. Chair Lenski. Here. And Commissioner Zucker. Here. All right. Okay. Um, we have the agenda in front of us. Do I have a motion to approve the agenda? So moved. Second. All right. Approved. And uh, the we minutes were vote, emailed out. We need to take a vote, I guess. Oh, yes. We just I had guess a second. I'll, I'll approve. Thank you. <laughs> All, <laughs> All right. in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Approved. Um, and the minutes were emailed out for everyone's review. Do I have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Can we, can, can we actually approve minutes and agendas and everything like that, even though oh. if we don't have a quorum? Oh, that is an excellent question. <laughs> I mean, the, the, the agenda, I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, exactly. the, the, the minutes, I don't know if we need to have everybody or not. We need Robert's rule of order. Yeah. Right. We do need a quorum for those. Pull out the, yeah. we should have a little thing we can pull out here. <laughs> I can tell the prompter. I don't know either, yeah. No. Yeah. Well, you can record that we had our vote for Obviously. it, and if we need to vote on it again, okay. the next meeting, <laughs> we'll, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll do a double meeting. meeting. Okay. Yeah. Um, we'll get the lawyers in here. All right, well, I'll open it up for public input. Hello. Oh, there you go. Very good. Quorum. Hey. Yes. Uh, if we have any members of the public who would like to speak about uh, an issue of energy uh, interest, please. Does climate count as energy? Please, yes. All right. Um, yeah, my name is Ken Garber. I live at 2387 Hilldale. Uh, looks like you have a light agenda tonight, so maybe you'll indulge me while I tell you how I view the climate crisis. Let's go back to first principles. Atmospheric carbon dioxide and methane allow energy in the form of visible light to pass freely through, but not infrared radi radiation. This has been established science for 140 years since the experiments of Irish physicist John Tyndall. Now, the sun's radiation is mostly in the form of visible light, which passes freely through greenhouses gases to reach the Earth. But when the Earth radiates back heat energy, which is an in infrared, it's partially blocked by carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases heating <coughs> the atmosphere. Uh, with the large-scale burning of fossil fuels, the level of CO2 in the atmosphere has risen from the pre-industrial level of 280 parts per million to about 410 parts per million now. Global temperatures have risen about one degree centigrade with the five hottest years on record coming in the last five years and the 20 hottest years in the last 22. Now, all this I know you know already. Um, climate models allow us a certain carbon budget before reaching two degrees centigrade heating, which is considered the threshold of global catastrophe. The IPCC and other modelers estimate the carbon budget to be about 700 billion tons of CO2. That 700 billion tons of CO2 that, we're not, that we are allowed to pump into the atmosphere going forward, and that's it, no more. Right now we're pumping about 42 billion tons of CO2 into the atmosphere each year, and that number is rising. Do the math. That gives us 16, 17 years, except that the principle of global equity dictates that the poorer and less industrialized parts of the world deserve a larger carbon budget to pull themselves out of poverty. University of Manchester climate scientist Kevin Anderson calculates that the industrialized world needs to re reach net zero emissions by 2035 at the latest in order to allow poor nations up to 2050 to reach net zero. Now to be clear, at two degrees centigrade heating, many people will die from extreme weather events, droughts and floods, agricultural collapse and disease, but they'll be poor, they'll be non-white, they'll be low carbon emitters, and they live a long way from here. We've already shown how little we care about them from how much CO2 we pumped into the atmosphere. Given the front loading of CO2, it's realistically too late to keep temperatures globally at 1.5 degrees higher um, than pre-industrial. So two degrees is the best we can realistically hope for. So the industrialized world must achieve net zero by 2035. And we must take decisive action now because we're talking about overhauling our entire economic system which you can't do overnight. We've shown over the last 30 years that incrementalism does not work. Annual carbon emissions have almost doubled since 1990, the year of the first IPCC report. The baby boomer generation, 
my generation, has completely failed in its great generational mission. We've wasted our 30-year grace period doing absolutely nothing to address the problem. Now the world has run out of time, and only radical action can save the Earth from complete catastrophe. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. OK, seeing no additional public input, we will move on to the energy report, news from the Energy Office and Commissioners. And um, I thought that um, sitting new in this seat and uh, John Mursky next to me, new in the, his role as vice chair, we would you know, speak for a couple minutes um, just about, about that. Um, and I wanted to just start by saying you know, that in my um, six years on the commission, um, I can recall only one other 5-4 vote. Um, before last month's election, and that was um, about nuclear energy, which we all know is the topic that is the most divisive thing to um, environmentalists. So I just want to say I recognize and acknowledge that, hope I can um, lead uh, in a non-divisive way, and just recognize that um, the kind of surprise non-reappointment of our uh, illustrious prior chair and the election last month uh, may mean that we need a little bit of healing, and I'm going to do my best to help facilitate that on the commission. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is just um, maybe uh, like a couple minutes of background about myself, because I know um, when I joined the commission, I had the opportunity to share a little bit of um, my bio with the folks who were on it at that time, but um, many of the people here were not. Um, and um, so I just thought it would be helpful to share. Um, I, I want um, everyone here to know just how deeply I share um, the environmental values, I think, of the fellow commissioners here. Um, I got my master's degree at the University of Michigan in the School of Environment and Sustainability um, in Sustainable Systems. I put solar on my house in 2012. I drive an electric car. I've cloth diapered my three children. I'm still cloth diapering the third of them. Um, we're a fully vegetarian household so on and so forth. And I say that not um, to pat myself on the back, but I wanted to make sure for those who didn't know me that you know that um, I do share uh, those values. Um, and, and you know, while those actions are important to me, as I know they are to many of you to um, kind of live your own values, I believe strongly that um, kind of as we heard in public input, you know, we're not going to um, solve our sustainability challenges via those kinds of actions, and the change really has to come at a large scale, fundamentally, um, through our, our biggest institutions, places like municipalities, like the city, and like utilities. So that's why I'm here serving on this commission, and that's where I work for, why I work for DTE. Um, so that's my background. Uh, I guess the other thing is, you know, as I um, mentioned last month um, during the nominations, um, you guys know the, the leadership positions on this commission is not like a powerhouse of authority, right? So um, we're not going to kind of change things up here. The direction that we take as a commission is the direction that we democratically vote on and choose to pursue as a commission. Um, that said, um, Vice Chair Mursky and I have discussed some ideas we had for um, things we would like to see and wanted to uh, just kind of put out there for folks' consideration, um, largely uh, related to kind of the efficient use of our time on the commission here and operating effectively. Um, the first thing was we wanted to uh, respectfully request that all of our agenda items that we want to discuss and any resolutions that are up for discussion are provided at least a full week in advance to Josh so that they can be shared with commission members and with the public. It's the respectful thing to do for those on the commission, obviously for the public, um, and hopefully then you know we can help our meetings run more efficiently if everybody has had the time to and committed to, for example, reading a full resolution in advance of getting here. Um, the other item I wanted to share, um, and one of our fellow commissioners raised this as an idea last month, was um, we're planning to create kind of an action item tracker um, to use uh, when we commit to something in these meetings, whether it's a resolution we pass or um, uh, you know something we say, hey, I'll go research that, I'll bring it back, or let's invite somebody to speak. Just have those uh, tracked so we know who's responsible and how we're progressing along on those. Um, and then uh, lastly, and this piece is a little bit more related to the content we talk about here, I did just want to kind of encourage all of us to 
um, think about the work that we do on this commission being in support of and leverage to the city's um, sustainability staff. Um, they finally have kind of funds to um, do the work to take meaningful action. They're the professionals who are spending 40 plus hours a week um, working on this. So um, I think there will undoubtedly be times that we as the advisory commission will do you know, what our name suggests to advise um, different directions or things that we feel that um, you know, they need to consider that they aren't. That's necessary and appropriate for us. Um, but I also think it's really appropriate for us to ask the staff what we can do to help them to execute the strategy that um, we helped them, you know, we gave them uh, guidance and counsel all along the way of developing it. And, um, you know, uh, there may be areas where uh, we could be more effective um, putting our time into something that is high priority for them and they need our additional guidance or expertise or actual kind of getting our hands dirty work um, than, you know, um, coming up with new ideas that uh, it, obviously if we believe they're important, we should talk about it, but um, may sometimes serve as distractions to the staff's uh, limited time. Um, and many times I think we won't know the answer at first about whether something um, is, uh, you know, mission critical or a distraction, right? And I, I guess I would encourage, I would love to see us use our time together um, as a commission to explore some of those topics, to educate each other and ourselves on them, and um, to get the staff's input and find out whether it's something we want to take action on or whether, okay, we've educated ourselves and we'll put that aside. Um, if we're going to take action on it, is a resolution always the right path? Um, I don't know. Sometimes I think it probably is, and sometimes we might decide there's another course of action that will be more meaningful. So. Um, all of that is, is really just food for thought. Like I said, you know, this will run as um, we collectively choose to run it, and we'll cover the topics that uh, folks here are, are interested in covering. Okay, that's, I'm done with my spiel, and I'll turn it over now. If I can comment very briefly. Uh, so as Chair Lenski mentioned, uh, the two of us met and talked about these things. I fully support her comments and her agenda. Um, this whole thing, from my perspective, I think from both of our perspectives, is not about status or about titles or about anything else. Um, we really want to be um, something that is about shared values, mission, and, and vision, and really be performance and outcome oriented. And that's what we um, have committed to in terms of how we want to lead um, the commission. Um, not that we want to steer anything, um, you know, we all have one vote. Um, anybody can propose changes to agendas and things like that, but you have our commitment that we share your values and we share your desire to have a positive impact on the city in terms of energy efficiency and in terms of having a positive impact on greenhouse gas emissions and the climate and the environment in general. Okay. Other, um, Commission news, energy updates. So I guess this is a, a great segue, um, kind of the collaboration between staff and commission uh, to talk a little bit about fire station number six. Um, so Chuck's been helping us out a lot as far as uh, fire station number six goes. I figured Chuck, do you wanna just kinda uh, highlight some of the things that you put together here? I, I sent this out uh, a little earlier today and we do have kind of the copy here. You have a, a mouse so you can kind of scroll through and all that. Yes, yeah, so I kind of violated this one week criteria right out of the box. <laughs> so sorry about setting a bad bar. Uh, we can exceed it next time. Um, so Fire Station 6 came out of um, an audit that was done by Honeywell of city facilities wherein we tried to come up with some um, ideas on what we should do spending-wise on our infrastructure to improve it, both energy efficiency and what else on the renewables front. And so... I think Fire Station 6 caught our eye as being one of those that could do both. And um, the document that was produced by Honeywell, we walked through that as a commission briefly one night about a year ago, I think. And then we think we had a vote on whether we should recommend continuation of their services. And I think we decided to take it offline. And we're still in that mode of what makes sense from a city point of view holistically. But I think what we said is Fire Station 6 represented an idea that could be a community-facing solar system that had a lot of benefits. And so 
the city decided to, to tackle the idea of working with U of M and their and a group of U of M students who are very interested in the volunteering aspect that we nurtured in, in Ypsilanti and take that into an Ann Arbor based alignment. So this project has a lot of those elements in it in the sense of volunteerism. So I decided I'm a professional engineer. I do a lot of solar projects around town to volunteer my services as well on this to help move this along. So I'm working on this from the perspective of design and hopefully support procurement construction. Um, it's a 1981 facility. It's, I think, 8,000 square feet of roof space. It has lots of exposure, not a lot of shading, so it has a great opportunity for adding solar. It's a flat roof. At one time, the city put up some solar thermal on the roof, and that didn't work so well, so that system is still up there and needs to be taken down. It doesn't look like it has any viability to move it forward. It's an older system as well. So the suggestion was, what can we do to maximize our, our investment here? So we've looked at this. Josh did an analysis. I've done an analysis to look at how much solar could be put on the roof realistically. And then looking at it from the perspective of different benchmarks, you know, looking at the demand of the facility, what kind of solar PV makes sense um, looking at it simply from the facility, as well as is there more solar that we could put out on the, on the grid? So. At this moment, I, I guess, Josh, I'm not exactly sure. The city filed the application with DT on the Category 2? Yes, so we have uh, the, the interconnect paperwork in uh, to grandfather us into the old net metering. Right. Uh, and we've done this for uh, about 13 buildings, roughly. Right. Um, large city uh, buildings, as far as large users, as well as kind of iconic spots, uh, parks, things like that that are out yep. in, the, in the community. Do you recall what we put in number-wise for kilowatts on this? I think we did uh, 60, maybe a little above 60 kilowatts. Okay. Um, we went a little higher just to be safe. I okay. Think that was the, yeah. Good. So what you'll find when you go through this, and I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna walk through this. I think it's a lot of information for you to, for you to look at in your light reading. I'm one of these people that always look at charters. I like to see objectives stated, goals stated, metrics defined, schedules identified, budgets. And then we can always go back and use that as a metric to, are we on track? Are we doing things to plan? Um, if something happens mid-flight, we can make adjustments and, and move forward. So what you'll find is some technical requirements in here. You'll find the code requirements of how we, what we have to meet. Um, what we found when we went to the firehouse was a lot of electrical information. It was out of date. It was not ever design updated. We've got some very large gas fire generation in our backup generation, which is typical for an emergency facility. So we looked at how do we best interface the solar with the building and so we came up with a strategy I think that works well we have an electrical room we have a way to tap into the system um, and so at this juncture we have and you know I'll get to us a, a picture here in a minute I won't go through all this in detail like I said but you'll see a roof system that's on the screen now we've got an upper roof that's on the west side of the building we've got a lower roof on the east side um, some other features I guess I'll just point out um, oops not so good there your mouse is fast tonight. I'm not. Um, you might be able to, if you do the scroll uh, bar on the right, if you're just going to grab ah. the bar. And then you can get the uh, it's on a smart screen. Yeah, I was maybe. Hoping. Yeah, there you go. All right, a little old technology. So you've got up here, you've got the gas fired generator. That's the backup generator that sits outside. You've got the DTE interconnection coming into the building. There's an electrical room about in this space here that provides the spot to tie in. So it provides pretty good access for us. And um, we looked at making sure we had enough room to work around this area. So in maintenance mode, we can actually work around this facility. We're not jamming too many panels up there for that. Um, we looked at an arrangement which is ballasted, so it sits on the roof. It's easily placed. It's easily removed. If we want to upgrade or change it, we can. The solar thermal is in this space here. We have a little bit of sh shadowing that we're still playing with here in terms of how much shadowing is too much. So there's some panels over here that might get shadow shadowed when a full sum summer, summer sun hits us. But in general, um, we're southern facing, fixed array, and we have very little shading that's really going to impact this. So it should get good solar insulation on the system. Um, I haven't modeled how much yet. I don't know exactly how much we're going to get in terms of generation at this stage. We haven't really totally optimized panels, but we're still in that mode. Um, I wanted to understand what our what our capabilities were. So this is kind of a least cost. If you look at what we're, what I'm doing these days with single and dual access tracking and some really fancy technology, 
this doesn't go there. We, we just simply want to generate with, with practical tier one suppliers. We've looked at some of the tier ones out there. Um, Mac and Mac is a local supplier of electrical. They've apparently muscled up and said they would help us on some fronts. So we're planning on going down a pathway of logic. Um, the one place I'll stop here, we have about 210 modules. Um, we're looking at about 300 watts per module DC. We're, we're an aggressive AC-DC ratio. We're basically at 57 kilowatts AC. Um, the building demand is far lower than that. So we'll, ha we'll be pushing power out on sunny days to the grid um, pretty regularly. Um, I put together a division responsibility. The Ann Arbor Energy Commission's on here. Guess what? All the folks on the commission are going to be the owner's engineer. <laughs> so as long as Josh lets that happen, the documents I create and the information that we pass along, which are going to happen for I think fairly quickly now because we'd like to get this thing moving very quickly will flow through this commission so we'll actually have some technical eyes on things which I think works well so Josh's office is the owner um, as is the fire department the fire department will also be supporting some of the labor and helping out in the field um, there's an architect that's separately doing the energy efficiency work that's not related to this project um, or budget and here's kind of the schedule we're looking at and it shows that we're going to be basically energized this year, which I think is a pretty strong goal. We'll have labor coming back into town in September when the students have nothing to do at the beginning of the semester. <laughs> Hopefully we'll have panels from the stuff up on the roof and get them rolling. So I think this is still achievable. Um, the budget still being refined. You can see that down at the bottom. I, I, it will be in much greater detail here shortly. I need to work with Josh and Missy on that front. And you see the personnel involved. So you've got Wayne, John, and, and the um, rest of us as uh, Energy Commission supporting the project. So um, here's kind of some thoughts on how we're going to move it forward. I think it, it makes sense. There's a lot of good involvement. I think there's a lot of community engagement. So uh, at this time, I'd open it up for any, any questions folks might have. I have a few questions, as usual. <laughs> uh, first of all, uh, my understanding is that we had, uh, I don't think it was called a GoFundMe, but it was the equivalent mm -hmm. to raise money. And I was wondering how much we actually did raise. It was around 12000 wasn't it, at one point? Or was that no, wishful I, I, thinking? Yeah, I think we had a target of 10000 uh, I think it got closed out around 3000 um, So that's how much we actually ended up raising. Okay. Um, and I do want to. I want to take a, a second just to, to thank Commissioner Hookham for all of the work he's done. It's it's been incredibly helpful, and I don't think we'd be where we are now without all of his work. So I just wanted to take the moment to to thank, thank you, you. Um, and then also say that uh, things are continuing to move on the site. Um, there's a, a the safety component of it. We want to make sure uh, having volunteers uh, that you know we go ahead and, and, and make sure that they're they're safe. Um, so we actually have a ballasted uh, rail system that's been put up on fire station number six. So that's already up. Um, I think the piece, uh, and I've uh, emailed some of the, we have a kind of fire station group, I guess, a working group. Uh, the piece that we're working on, and I think it's probably going to take the longest, um, is the kind of PPA model. Uh, so currently we're trying to see if we can get a, a power purchase agreement uh, with Michigan Saves. And that's probably just from the kind of legal uh, aspect, the, the legal component. We got to just make sure that uh, you know everything looks good as far as the contract and all the terms are worked out. So I think that's what's going to probably uh, and, and has already uh, pushed the project out uh, this far. Um, there is also another piece of that as well, which is uh, I think as, as Chuck has uh, mentioned that uh, when students come back in August September, uh, because they really did help to to start this project. Uh, it's going to be, I think the timing will be right uh, to have them come back and, and kind of help with the, the volunteer labor on the fire station number six. Um, so in the end, the, the timing actually might not be so bad, but I do think that PPA is, is what's holding things up. The two bigger urgent things to just add on to that are yep. getting a permit from the city, which hopefully they'll just be all over because it's kind of a city-related idea. Here, yes. But, um, which I'll work that system that they need my drawings to do that as well as procurement. So we yep. need to get some things procured. Yeah, so we've been in touch um, with a few different options as far as procurement as well to see what, what the options are out there for wholesale uh, solar panels. So yeah, so things are moving. I had uh, one other comment slash question. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, I reviewed this this afternoon and forwarded it to Wayne Appleyard. Mm -hmm. 
um, and asked him about the status of the solar hot water system because when we were on site, uh, I think those of us that were there when we remember there was some question as to whether it might indeed um, be something that could be resurrected. Um, he uh, indicated that he hadn't done much, although after I uh, forwarded this to him, he called the company in Canada and said that they're still in business. Yeah. Um, the product um, is um, still essentially a, a viable product. I think it's, it's still even in manufacture. Um, there are some protections built into it that probably make the basic um, panels uh, usable. So the question is, well, he said he could potentially get together with Dave Conkle and review it, um, but he wanted to leave that up to us and primarily to you, um, Chuck, to see whether it's something that's worthwhile looking into. Um, it could probably be moved if it's not in an optimal position right now. Um, he said that there's, it looks like there's some problems in terms of the piping not having been insula insulated properly and things like that. So the initial installation was not as good as it could have been. Yeah. So I, I thought that I would bring his comments to the commission um, and in particular to you and uh, with the uh, request that you think about it or let me know right now and I can get back in touch with Wayne and he could potentially do an inspection to see if it's salvageable. Well, I've inspected it. The BOP, oh, the BOPs definitely needs to be reworked. So yeah. if we were to save that, if if the balance of it still worked, and I've done solar thermal, so I know the pan, the, the panels are what's critical. You're right. I can't tell if there's internal damage or not. Mm -hmm. The fire chief said, and I don't remember. I can't quote him exactly what he said, but basically he said it's never worked since he's been there. Yeah, so I think he said it, it was something within a couple of months. It was, yeah. it was non-functional. So yeah. it may have been bad training. It may have been nobody did maintenance. Correct. One of those things happened. Yep. I'd be more than happy to take that on and see if we could salvage it. But basically at this juncture, based on his input, mm -hmm. I'm not sure it's in that space. So, so. What, what I'll do is I'll, I'll close yep. the loop with Wayne. I'll copy you. Yep. And um, the, the, the two of you plus Dave can decide um, to what level of... Uh, investment time-wise it is worth um, looking into it and then we can go from there. Dave's role is? Well, Dave, I guess, is um, also familiar with the systems and it would just be a second opinion, okay. that's all. Okay. I guess um, Wayne had talked with uh, Dave and Dave was indi indicated that he'd be willing to, to look at it together with Wayne. Okay. And they could do that, you could do it as a threesome. Sounds good. I so like foursomes, I'm a golfer, but Jack, okay. maybe. Yeah. Was Dave a, a city employee at the time that it was installed? Probably. Yeah. That was one of his say. pet projects. Yeah. yeah he Seems was like he did some degree of familiarity. That's a good point. Yep. And just another comment, I guess, as an absolute worst case, maybe they could be donated or repurposed or something. So they That's a possibility, to too. Landfill. Right. Well, Fair I'll enough. just uh, add a second from the um, thank you that uh, Josh provided. This was um, a lot of work. I think well question from my perspective, I, I know um, you guys submitted the uh, interconnection application in time for the net metering deadline. I was under the impression there was another deadline that needed to be met. I thought six months later there was some yeah. point. Is that uh, aligned yes. with the timeline here? So we do have, um, we actually have energy efficiency RFP that's hit the streets. Uh, we want to make sure that these 13 buildings, uh, that they're as energy efficient as they can be before we put solar panels on there. And we also have a solar RFP that's also hit the streets, or at least should be hitting the streets very soon here, um, for the actual installation of the solar panels on the, the 13 buildings. Okay. What about um, uh, for this one specifically, um, it, you probably, you're much closer to this than I am. Isn't there something that has to be physically installed by the, I thought it was a physical installation completed within six months, but. There needs to be progress made. There needs to be a contract signed. A contract. Actually, a net metering contract. That's a contract, okay. Executed. So that, so that timeline you have will yeah, achieve that, okay. That'll be fine. I just, so, some details I haven't heard till tonight, which the RFP, I'm not sure how that works. If that yeah. plays into this or not. This is gonna be, um, that's a good point. This is going to be a separate project separate. from uh, the other 12 buildings. So I guess this would be the 13th, uh, just because of the nature of the install, the volunteer labor, right. um, and then, yeah, just trying to, to move things forward as quickly as possible. 
So for safety purposes, obviously the electrical side of this project will be contracted out by a licensed contractor yep. and, and hopefully but between me as building the electrical we'll end up with a better situation that they've got now, which is we're not sure what we have. We're looking at the breakers and not sure what's live and what's not. So. Okay. I was curious to know what percentage of the needed funding is in hand or is that being So that has to do with the kind of PPA process. Um, so if we end up doing a power purchase agreement, um, it's kind of a, a way to uh, lease and then pay back. It's, mm -hmm. it's almost like a, a loan that mm -hmm. we'd be paying back on the system. Mm -hmm. So, And that's that's what we're, we're currently trying to figure out, the, the legality of, of, you know, the terms and the conditions and mm -hmm. the contract itself. Is that something the city attorney is and the city finance? Yes. Aside from what's been discussed here, is there anything else, um, Josh, that you or Chuck, that you guys um, could use as assistance from the commissioners over the next month before our next meeting? I think the big thing would read the read the charter and let us know if there's something that anyone wants to participate in in more detail, if they want to work on design or anything you want to work on, anything would be welcomed. And then maybe what I need to do a little more granularly is advise the commission what's coming next and when. Right. So there's a heads up that we don't surprise everybody with, we need this response tomorrow. Mm -hmm. So that'll be the plan, okay. a little more detail on that. Great. So um, given the uh, importance of this and the timing, maybe we can uh, have a monthly update mm -hmm. on the progress of this as well as the other sites, just where they stand. Okay. Yeah. Great. Makes sense. All right, anything Thanks. else on this? And, and to your comment earlier we should look at progress against the target timetable because obviously we'd like to generate energy as soon as we can and we also don't want to miss any deadlines like the connection yeah. type well, of deadline that you were talking about December is not a great solar month I can attest that, to is that. <laughs> that is true so we'll get it ready and then it won't do much for a couple of months that's a good point uh, fair point and, and the solar thermal will have to move on quickly so. yes that's true and I'll mention that to Wayne too okay Thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving right along. We have a resol resolution to acknowledge the Ann Arbor Public Schools. Um, the commissioner should have this resolution in front of them, and it was posted on Legistar for the public. Do I have a motion to discuss the resolution? Discuss the resolution. Second. Very good. All right, discussion. We had um, some comments that were provided over the course of drafting the resolution. And Carlene, I know you integrated those. I did. I, um, do we, would you like to read this before we vote on it, or do we want to? I, I have one question. Sure. The, as I understand it, the real objective of this is, in effect, if you distill it down to congratulate and uh, to encourage the Ann Arbor Public Schools to move aggressively on a wide array of environmental issues focusing on the priorities that have been outlined. Is that, that's really what's behind the resolution, right? Yes, yes. the, the um, original motive was really to acknowledge the Ann Arbor Public Schools for having adopted um, a uh, policy and, a re and regulation into their, their um, regulation and policies manual um, titled Environmental Sustainability. It's an entire category. And the resolution actually includes the elements of the policy. And um, so we were very interested in encouraging them and acknowledging them for, for having done this. We have in the past on the commission provided um, recognition via resolutions to other mm -hmm. groups that have helped advance uh, sustainability goals. Any further discussion, questions, or concerns? Friendly amendments? I look forward to the next resolution when there's a major accomplishment, mm -hmm. as I mentioned to you. That's, yes. that's where I think it's really impactful is um, when we really see something significant, mm -hmm. then we really want to um, 
chime in and, 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 and congratulate the public school system. What they've done is lay a great foundation. I think that's great and it deserves recognition. And then hopefully we'll be um, having a drumbeat of resolutions, uh, lauding them for action taken. Well, um, the, the priorities right now, as um, have been presented to the Board of Education, the short-term priorities are uh, focusing on energy and water, the, um, to reduce utility consumption, establish a building energy improvement plan for each building um, as far as uh, the focus for energy and water. And then the second priority, there's three pr primary priorities. The second is focus on recycling program to enhance and repair current recycling system to reduce landfill um, and increase diversion rate of the waste stream as well as to reduce a single use product item, items such as styrofoam trays and plastics and water bottles, straws and plasticware. The third of the short term priorities is to focus on supporting living and learning initiatives. So at the elementary schools um, to uh, transform them into neighborhood centers of engagement and sustainability and um, using school campus and buildings as living learning labs and curriculum uh, for curriculum integration. Uh, and also to enhance gardening programs and planting trees for shading. So um, in addition to that, uh, there is going to be an effort to document current school-based initiatives and then also to create more opportunities for volunteerism and service learning. So that's what they're working on. Those are the first uh, things that they're going to be um, It's part of this, this policy. If I can comment, make one other comment. Mm -hmm. uh, it was recently reported um, that the school board voted unanimously to go to um, voters in November um, asking for a $1 billion, I think it's, a, I don't know if it's a bond or a mill, it's a millage, mm -hmm. a millage increase. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know if you're the appropriate person to take this back, but I think from those of us um, sitting on the commission, I would hope that one of our interest is that um, as the details of that bond request are flushed out mm -hmm. and are made public that one of the things that we would be looking at certainly is what is reflected in the bond in terms of sustainability types of investments that the um, public schools will be making. Uh, I think the article said that the average age of public schools is something like 63 years old. Mm -hmm. um, so that means there's probably really significant opportunities in terms of energy efficiency, mm -hmm. which would also lead to comfort benefits, mm -hmm. um, use of renewable energy, and so on and so forth. And I think it would be a pity if they went to the voters and said, we're going to spend $100 million, or excuse me, a billion dollars, and we want a 1.6 1, 1. mil increase, and there's really not anything significant included in that package related to environmental sustainability and climate action. Well, uh, maybe we can invite someone to speak to us that and, and um, describe to us the different aspects of what the anticipated changes would be mm -hmm. that do specifically relate to environmental sustainability at, at the structure, the building structure level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Okay. That'll be on our action item tracker. May I put you as the owner? Absolutely. So I'll take that on. Can come? Mm -hmm. Thank you. I will. Okay. Anything else? All right. Shall we vote? All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Okay. It passes. Uh, moving on, we have a youth commission resolution, and this is something that um, uh, the staff member, Missy Stoltz, mentioned last meeting. It is a uh, copy of a resolution that was passed by the Environmental Commission um, looking to add two um, seats to the commission, to, to each of the commissions for youth members. Um, you have that in front of you, and again, that was posted. Um, do we have a motion? I move to consider the resolution. Okay. Question, so I think we mentioned in the last meeting that other commissions were doing a similar thing. Is this kind of a similar resolution to other commissions that we know of? Or? It, it passed the Environmental Commission in the last meeting. Um, what the plans are beyond that, um, I don't know. Um, Councilmember Eaton, do you have any idea? Is this 
something that's intended um, potentially for other commissions. I don't think it's potentially necessarily for all. Part of the rationale was that um, environmental sustainability is going to have a bigger impact potentially on the youth as opposed to people in my generation. Um, that's not necessarily true of the work of all other commissions. Um, can you comment on that? I, I'm not aware of any plan to universally um, include youth on commissions. I know that there have been some preliminary discussions about having a youth commission to, to the, actually opine on all issues. Um, I think this is a probably a more suitable way to go about this rather than having too general of a scope of authority. Um, I will note that the Environmental Commission already has 13 members, and to add two more members is, is makes the body cumbersome. And so I think that that will be a, a topic of discussion at Council. Mm -hmm. um, I think there will be general support for youth members. It's just um, whether or not that size of commission is, is manageable. Yeah. And part of that's based on, I think there's three liaisons, including there are two council members. There's one from this commission. There's right. one from planning. Yes. Um, yeah. One for transportation. Transportation too, I think. Maybe not. But yeah, that's one from parks. Parks. That's what it is. Yeah. And so, um, at some point in time, a, a body becomes too big to be effective. Yeah. And. The Environmental Commission has so much on its plate right now that um, I don't want to hobble them with excess population. I have a few couple technical questions on this now, therefore be it resolved. Uh, it talks to two voting members reserved for youth between 14 and 25. I remember when I was 25, if you call me a youth, I'd be pretty mad. So I'm not sure where that bracket came from. Usually youth, I guess, you're an adult after 18. I guess you're trying to fit a, an educational profile, maybe university students here. So I guess I'm not going to get too hung up on that. But I mean, that's just the generality that it, it's generally between that group, at that age bracket. I would also say that students tend to have a shorter attention span. So this may not be something. Maybe we look at more of a transitory member that doesn't have the same term. You know, I, I remember when I was in that age group, I would be interested for a, a semester and then I'd want to do something else. I, just we need to be a little bit flexible on how we bring this out, I think, than real rigid rules. Yes, this one does have one-year terms. Okay. Um, but but oh, uh, certainly we could even consider a, a semester-length term, certainly for college students. Um, schedules, you know, there's evening classes and schedules might change so that they could attend one semester and not the next. And so perhaps that is a, a more appropriate, mm -hmm. you know, with possibility of um, extension to a second Okay. Semester. John, I think you maybe speak to us a little bit more. Yeah, I, I, I probably, I think probably the, can. The group was already uh, originally 14 to 21. It was, it, it was um, because I, as your liaison, there's some benefit, so I can bring some insights from the Environmental Commission. Um, the one year term originally started out being three years, um, mm -hmm. just like everybody else, and we recognized, as okay. you have and others, that that's probably unrealistic. Um, and I think we didn't get into great detail, but the sentiment was that um, one year is long enough where there's some continuity, um, yet um, it's not um, too long where someone is committing themselves um, where they may be leaving town to go to college or going to graduate school. Mm -hmm. um, the increase in the age, originally it was formula formulated 14 to 21, and what we wanted to be able to do was include graduate students because um, many graduate students, um, particularly um, as our chair, um, it, are studying um, topics that are particularly relevant to this, um, and we would potentially be excluding them uh, with an age limit of, of 21. So we didn't think about the word youth. I guess maybe that was because all of us mostly there were, were relatively older and they were still youthful. That would still be youthful. <laughs> But uh, that we did increase the age to 25 for that specific reason. Maybe before the brackets there, we could use the word student instead of youth. Does that work? Um, from my perspective, yes, because presumably, presumably they would all be students, although can, you know, someone over 18 who is passionate about this maybe isn't going 
to um, okay. to some is not a student anymore, and they're in a professional um, role now, or they're in a job role, um, and they still may be a, a, a good representative. One last thing while I have the floor, and that is I don't think it's reflected here, but we also agreed that um, we would increase the threshold for non-resident youth members, um, just as we have for non-resident commissioners. So we didn't want to exclude an outstanding candidate from, let's say, a township right outside the city limits, maybe even going to Ann Arbor Public Schools, um, but not a resident of Ann Arbor. Um, so we said, let's um, increase the threshold so that they require seven votes, uh, votes from council to be approved. Um, and obviously, we hope that the, the process in the case of a tie, so to speak, in terms of qualifications, we would favor a city resident over someone outside the city. Those were the main topics that we discussed. Would that be um, covered under this uh, final resolve clause about the city codes and uh, the membership section? Those that should cover the voting required depending on residency status? That's correct. Okay. okay. Great. It's in the charter. So we, we, we can't pass a, a resolution or ordinance that um, conflicts with the charter. Any further considerations, recommendations? I, I guess I have one last question. This goes to council for final action, correct? We're, we're not making this decision ourselves. You're passing a resolution. In favor of it. Recommending it. Yes, correct. But yep. Yeah, it would have to come to council. Yeah, that was, yep. And I believe that that will come out of the Environmental Commission and, and uh, I don't see it on on Monday's agenda, so oh, okay. it, it hasn't come forward yet. I have one question, I guess, about um, obviously children under 18 can't vote in elections. Is there any issue or conflict with voting on city-related matters for under 18? Actually, actually, the issue that that raises is that the charter says that if you're not an elector of the city, mm -hmm it takes seven votes to confirm you. And so somebody under 18, mm -hmm. even if they live within the city, would require that seventh vote. I, I don't think that's gonna be you know, that big of an obstacle. Okay. But, you know, but because this commission and all of our commissions are just advisory, um, having them participate is not that big of a deal. Okay. Um, we had youth members on our um, police oversight task force um, it presents some unique challenges, but it, it was something that worked fairly well. Good. good. I mean, I, I think it's best that they, if they have them, that they have voting privileges. I mean, that gives them more stake in the game. So just one last thing. I think that, I don't get to vote on this, but I, I think I know how this is gonna go. I, I think that we should consider um, a resolution asking to, to add a youth member to this commission. That's what this does. Mm -hmm. I thought this was for the environmental. It was well, as it was originally sent out. It was for environmental. Oh, I'm sorry. But this has now been changed, so it's okay. energy then, commission. Then my my concern about the the number of members is not so they're not going to do it for their commission. Yeah, I mean it's it will go to council for for approval. Yes. Okay. Yeah. So this is just I, I obviously haven't read this carefully. <laughs> I thought this was about the Environmental Commission. Yeah. So you're asking, you're advising council that we should add a, um, two members to this for yes, youth members, one year terms. Okay. Um, so this is the advice that we're giving to council. So um, we would just have to modify this to present it as a council resolution. Mm -hmm. And I, I don't see a, a, a big obstacle there. I believe our fourth whereas, now therefore be it resolved, um, covers that. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I think uh, the, the Energy Commission for the City of Ann Arbor urges City Council to amend the City Code to expand the membership. So, so was this commission established by resolution or, or ordinance? I think it was... By resolution, I think. Was it by resolution? Yeah, so I think so. I think so. So we would only have to pass a resolution to, okay. to 
amend that previous resolution. Okay. Are there, how many voting members are there on the, of the Energy Commission? I thought it was 11. So that would bring it to 13 instead of 15, right? Like voting members? Yeah, I guess that would be because the idea would be the youth, they would be able to, youth commissioners would be able to vote. So mm -hmm. to change 15 vo uh, voting members to 13 voting members? Ah, uh, yes. we got to change that as well. Ah, uh, yes. Yeah. Yep. In all honesty, we, we grabbed this for the Environmental Commission, so there's a few changes we should <laughs> so, <laughs> so still if I, make. If yep. I'm hearing the language correctly, I think in that now, therefore, be it resolved clause, we need to change it. Um, instead of City Council amending City Code, it would be urge the City Council to expand the membership of the Commission, right? I mean, that's yeah, all. That would work. And, and so we can literally just delete, you know, a few things there. To pass um, a resolution to expand, is that what? And then I would remind the commission that um, the bylaws that we previously approved that haven't been approved by the city council yet because they're still under review by the city attorney's office adds both of the council members as voting members as well. So, right. um, so that would bring us up to 15 here as well, but you know, I don't know that that's a concern. Mm -hmm. I'll let you decide that. Okay, so we'll uh, uh, delete to amend city code title chapter one, chapter eight, so forth, to say pass a resolution and revise the 15 voting members to 13, at least based on current bylaws mm -hmm. uh, subject to change. Any um, further edits folks want to move forward with? Maybe one last question to Carlene. Would, would this be attractive to students? We've seen students in our, in our crowd before. Mm -hmm. I think it was a class commitment that they had to come, maybe, mm -hmm. but if maybe there is interest out there to attend this and participate. I think that once students find out that this is an opportunity for them, there will be some who will want to take this, take advantage of this. Okay, mm -hmm. thanks. Perhaps there's some teacher who will give extra credit. <laughs> <laughs> we have some aspiring politicians. One last minor comment, and I, I can't remember how we came out on this. There was some discussion about the time of the meeting, um, whether, um, at least for Environmental Commission, because it meets from 7 till roughly 9, 9.30. Um, we meet an hour earlier. That may be something we may want to consider once we have youth members, what is the best time based on their other extracurricular activities, you know, family meal times, whatever else that might be. Um, constraining their participation. So that I think we can take that uh, question on at a later point. And one further consideration is getting a quorum tonight was a problem, but if you add two members, it actually increases the number of people you have to have present to create that quorum to be able to vote on things. And, and just, um, just to keep that in mind. Okay, ready to vote? Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? Passes. Okay, moving on. Um, that is the end of our commissions. We have committee updates now for many of the committees that have met over the last month. Uh, do we have any updates from the Solar Access Ordinance Committee? We were unable to meet this month, so we canceled the meeting. Um, and really because of lack of effort on the chair's part, I'll, I'll take criticism there. One of the things we need to probably do is stimulate our city planning groups, whether it's the staff and commission, who those folks might be and start processing this with them because I wanna make sure we don't get out of line with them particularly. Legal staff obviously ultimately will get there with them, but I think we still need to understand who that is. Yeah, we have identified someone in the city planning. Um, I don't think they could meet on the times we generally meet, so okay. it might be a conversation as to whether we could be flexible with our uh, meeting time. Yeah. Um, but I think as long as we can find out, you know, maybe a Friday or something like that, a, a day that works for all of us, okay. um, we can set up that okay. meeting. Okay, thank you. Any updates from the Lighting Ordinance Committee? The lighting ordinance is still hung up on the issue of amortization. In other words, when existing fixtures 
would need to be updated, if at all. Um, the draft um, has amortization included in it. It's based on a national standard. Um, it is with the city attorney's office and between it and the planning commission. And um, I don't have any specific due dates of when it's anticipated out of there. Um, beyond that, um, we will have a second meeting or really first sort of official meeting on potential changes to the orange book related to lighting in the public right of way on the 18th of this month. So that's not this ordinance, but it's sort of a follow on activity from the ordinance as I've mentioned here before. Thank you. The Energy Audit Disclosure Ordinance Committee. John, do you wanna? Sure, I can comment on that. So we, um, we continue to meet. We now have a um, first draft resolution um, based on uh, a, what's called best practice from Portland, if I recall correctly. Mm -hmm. um, so that, that's been reviewed, it's posted to our Google Drive, and um, the next meeting will be devoted to um, going through that bit by bit with all the working group people and trying to finalize um, that, uh, that ordinance. Um, Josh, anything to add? Yeah, I just have one quick uh, update um, that happened after our meeting. Uh, there were, uh, I think the realtors are very interested in being involved um, so they reached out, and I think that might be something we talk about at our next meeting, kind of uh, starting to involve them at this point that we have kind of a, a draft put together. Yep. Thank you. All right, the EV Readiness Ordinance Subcommittee. I can speak to that. The, um, on June 27th, there was uh, an event that was hosted, co-hosted by the City of Ann Arbor, um, the University of Michigan, Energy Institute, um, Spark, and the Ecology Center. And uh, the purpose was um, based on the uh, recently announced incentive program called Charging Forward by DTE. It was, uh, it was we invited businesses uh, in the Ann Arbor area to come and learn, uh, people who are property owners and managers, um, uh, retailers, retail businesses, offices, restaurants, government uh, properties, to um, learn about being hosts, charging EV charging station hosts, and learn what it takes to um, install charging stations, um, everything that's entailed in, in the all aspects of, of being a host, a charging station host. And we um, had three different uh, companies represented who um, we had uh, Greenworks and ChargePoint and eMotorworks uh, reps were there to, to answer questions. Uh, DTE explained what the program was and um, it was very, very well attended. You were there, right, John? Yeah, so uh, folks learned a lot. It was very interesting, all the questions that were being asked, the concerns that were being posed. And uh, I think it's gonna, I think it's going to be uh, there's going to be some some interest and some movement on increasing um, charging stations throughout the city. Yeah. As to the ordinance itself, um, there is also a first draft now posted to our Google Drive of the ordinance. Um, we are using an existing parking table that's currently in the UDC. So there is um, a table that looks at what defines and looks at um, all different types of property usages and defines the number, minimum number of parking um, places or stalls required for that, um, anywhere from none to um, you know, a certain number per square foot or whatever, plus also bicycle parking spaces. And we've simply added on to that and we now have that table filled out um, so that there's an initial um, starting point for us to review. Uh, actually, um, Wayne Appleyard and I met yesterday um, because um, when, we, um, when we first had filled it out, we had 13 different, uh, let's say, groupings of EV readiness requirements out of about 140 different types of uses, if I recall. Um, and um, we 
um, sat down and simplified that down to six, so it's not quite so complex. And what we uh, have done is um, we have some basic rationale for each one of those groupings. We're going to try to refine that and the agreement from the rest of the uh, working group members is that they will review that um, before our next meeting, which is two weeks from today. So they can go into the Google Drive and provide comments, and then our task will be to go through jointly and re review everyone's comments, <coughs> pros and cons, or making other suggestions, and hopefully then uh, arrive at uh, at least an, an initial draft that we can start to bounce off of other stakeholders. Thank you. Yep. All right, outreach to schools. I don't have any update at this point in time. Thank you. And uh, the report from the Environmental Commission. So uh, a couple of things I think are noteworthy. Um, first of all, um, a comment made to open the meeting that I think is relevant actually for this commission. Um, Council Member Griswold, um, who's attending this evening, um, asked the Environmental Commission to provide input on environmental impacts of transportation projects. And um, my sense is that um, at least from an energy perspective, um, we are potentially more um, or the appropriate body to do that, working together with staff than the Environmental Commission. Of course, that doesn't mean that there's other, not other environmental impacts um, of transportation projects, but if we're looking at um, any type of changes to transportation plans or policies, um, that's potentially something that we should be looking at and weighing in on. Um, so we would potentially do that together with the Environmental Commission. Um, the Commission also held elections Steve Brown was elected chair, Susan Hutton was elected vice chair, and Christopher Graham was um, elected as um, the representative on the Transportation Master Plan CAC. Um, as we discussed, uh, the Environmental Commission passed a similar resolution to the one we just passed on youth members. Um, there was another resolution passed asking Washtenaw County Road Commission to reduce its use of herbicides through the adoption of a comprehensive roadside vegetative management plan based on best practices. Um, it was brought to the attention that there's, in some cases, seemingly indiscriminate spraying of herbicides where they're just going down the road and spraying large swaths of uh, vegetation. And the hope is, is that, um, that we'd be done more judiciously, not to eliminate it because there's uh, indeed uh, justifiable reasons for using herbicides, especially with some invasives. So um, we're encouraging them to come up with a, a vegetation, vegetative management plan. Um, and let's see, I think maybe most interest um, is a couple of other things. Um, the committee, uh, the commission I should say, asked for a um, solid waste update um, report. The commission has normally been getting those quarterly in the past, but since the solid waste resource management plan um, project and update project has been worked on, um, there haven't been any updates on, for example, financials. So what are um, revenues, what are expenses, what is the net impact on the, uh, the reserve fund? So we asked for uh, that to be provided um, through fiscal year 19. That's now, or will, you know, yeah, that's, that, that's now over. Um, we also um, wanted to get a re some insights into how uh, commodity markets have impacted the city's income um, and its revenue uh, related to recycled materials. So the statement has been made, for example, by Aptum that with, um, significant decreases in commodity costs, um, that that's going to impact revenue not only last year but going forward. So we wanted to get a better understanding of how that's actually fluctuated and what the impact truly is in terms of dollars and cents terms. And then the last thing we asked um, that the city provide a status of the MRF reactivation proposal that's been submitted by Recycle Ann Arbor. Um, the city um, compared to when it was operating a MRF locally or had uh, a contract with someone to operate our MRF locally, 
we're spending at least $20,000 a month more um, to ship recycled materials to Ohio. That obviously has a negative impact on greenhouse gases. It also means that where we would have jobs processing recycled material locally, um, and most likely union jobs, that those jobs are now in Ohio processing our recycled materials. So it really makes sense to try to, to bring that home, so to speak, as quickly as possible. And um, I guess the only other thing is there was some discussion. Um, there's been a lot of issues related to um, heritage trees, significant trees that have been cut down or put in jeopardy by various projects. And so the request was made that the Natural Features Working Group um, look at um, a heritage tree ordinance based on best practices, and that group has agreed to, to look at that. So that's, that's it. Thank you. Can I ask a question about, um, uh, I think the first item you brought up around us assisting in evaluating the energy or climate impact of transportation plans. Uh, does the Environmental Commission have a plan for how they will um, kind of be aware of and uh, you know identify which plans are, are under consideration that they need to and, and we should then consider addressing? Not that I'm aware of. This was a request that was made. Um, it, in principle, it makes sense that we should look at projects from a sustainability perspective um, and uh, what the impact might be on greenhouse gases or other sustainability uh, aspects. Um, but it was just a request that was made, and I think that's something we need to discuss um, between OSI and Council and see what potentially might be expected. Got it. Thank you. And then I would assume that those projects that meet that, that threshold, um, they would go potentially to staff and both commissions to evaluate and to provide input on. So right now, this is just conceptual. Okay. We can, we can put as an action item to make sure we follow up and understand how, how we will get involved in those. Indeed. Okay. Thank you. All right, that is the end of our updates from our subcommittees. At this time, I'll open it up again for public input if any members of the public wish to share any input. No, seeing none. Um, discussion of items for the next agenda. And um, on this, our next meeting is, uh, our next meeting that's formally on the calendar is our September meeting. We have typically taken August off. Um, I wanted to propose um, in some years in the past, we have gotten together in August for a work session, often a longer one than our typical meetings, some kind of offsite um, used to uh, talk about strategy for the upcoming year, make sure we're um, aligned with, you know, we could use it to make sure we're aligned with staff, think about whether the subcommittees we have are the ones we want to continue, um, uh, conduct, you know, other, other, uh, commission business, obviously it would be at a public meeting, uh, given all of us getting together there, but really use it as a working meeting. Um, I'll throw that out there and see if there's interest um, from others. Yes, I, I will not be here in September. Uh, I'll be out of town, but um, I, I support the idea of having some type of working session in the coming weeks. I support that idea too. I think it's um, scheduling is always tricky, and I know I'm going to be gone for a few days in August, but yeah, the concept is good. Okay. Well, we, it, others? I, I also like the idea as well. Okay. You just have to figure out the right date. Yeah, yeah. so if, if we do have that general interest, um, what we can do is put together a doodle poll with some options. And, um, you know, we'll have to think about, let, make sure that we've got a quorum enough people to make it worthwhile and if not, look for other dates. But, um, you know, there's nothing saying it has to be in August just since we don't have a regular meeting then. That mm -hmm. tends to be a convenient time. Okay. Um, anything else then um, uh, that for next agenda, either things you'd want on the agenda for the um, special work session if we have it, or items um, to add to the September agenda that we're aware of at this time. Do you uh, think we'll have the greenhouse gas inventory by we September? We are hoping <laughs> yeah. Yeah. that we get all the, the data ironed out by then. It should be <laughs> ready by then. I, I, it, it's not an agenda for the next item, but maybe it's um, something 
to put in our calendars as a reminder, maybe um, Josh, you particularly. Uh, this Friday, the annual Rolling Sculpture, which is sort of an exhibit of classic cars, takes place in downtown Ann Arbor. Um, I've been there several times and literally hundreds of people show up and I think it would be great. Um, I did some, ex some inquiries of, as to whether potentially a slot could be reserved for this um, session, but apparently that's not possible for um, EVs. Mm -hmm. I mean, if, if we're gonna be talking and there's gonna be hundreds of Ann Arbor residents looking at mm -hmm. the past of mobility and transportation and vehicles, yeah. it would be really nice if there is also an exhibit mm -hmm. where people that are knowledgeable about the future of transportation and mobility could be there. I mean, there's also some antique EVs. In fact, I reached out to yeah, the Michigan know. Electric yeah. um, Vehicle antique Association EVs. head, and they have a couple of like 1910, 1920 type EVs. It would be great to have, yeah. you know, a Bolt, a Tesla, a Rivian, um, and a bunch of other vehicles um, at future events. That is run, though, apparently by the Main Street Area Association. Mm -hmm. It's not, I don't think, officially a city event, although obviously the city is involved. And it seems to me we should try to um, get in line sometime like maybe April or March and inquire um, whether or not we could get X number of spaces um, to be able to um, promote um, EVs. Um, at least our last uh, index greenhouse gas uh, projection w showed that transportation emissions was going to increase to be the majority of our emissions. I don't know how it's looking now, but it's probably not gonna change a whole lot. That's what a lot of other projections are showing. So transportation is gonna be really a hard nut to crack um, and this was an opportunity to get in front of a lot of people, and I think we should try to do that every year. Yeah, uh, I think that's a great idea. We'll definitely look into it. Yep. And I think uh, by next summer, we should have some pre production vehicles rolling, hopefully. So yeah. I great. could talk to somebody. That'd be great. That'd work. Thank you. We'll get Josh to uh, set up a, a track around Ann Arbor. There you yeah. go. So we go from, from zero to 60 in three seconds, three seconds. right? Yeah. <laughs> I think actually last year. Everybody can same, get their G's. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think there was actually an old Model T, an electric Model I've T. I've seen them there before. Yeah, yeah. If you'd seen it at the, the fair. I was really impressed. Yeah, yeah that'd be, that's a great idea. So maybe we could I love it. Put a reminder in our calendars to do that every year. Great idea. Did, did you know when, how far in advance you need to reserve a spot? I, I don't. It was just something that after the event that Carlene described, a light went off because I had put it in my calendar because it's fun to go downtown and there's a lot of people out and so it's fun to car watch and people watch mm -hmm. and I thought why aren't we getting EVs there and I um, talked to a couple of people and I got a feedback today that uh, all the slots are taken mm. um, like I said I reached out to the head of the Electric Vehicle Association and they're willing to do it and to help um, and we'd have to work with um, potentially manufacturers slash um, some of the um, automotive, uh, what's the right word? The re not the retailers, but what do you call them? Dealerships. Dealerships, Dealerships thank you. Um, to be able to do that, but if we get you know a handful, that would be really great. Yeah, yeah, and, and I can go ahead and, and look into what it, what the timing would be and what it would take, and we can uh, yeah. update it. To yeah, I'm sure there's some sure. point person yeah, that could cool. give it those kind of details. Yeah. That's it. Thanks. Thank you. I can I can ask. Um, someone from the public school district, the Animal Public Schools, to possibly have someone September. here in September. Okay. Yeah, especially if um, it looks like the resolution will be presented in August uh, at City Council, then they would be perfect to kind of segue very nicely. Thank you, excellent, okay. And that would be great since I think it's gonna be on the November, November. ballot. Yeah. We wanna get that out and get then the if there's any kind yeah. of endorsement or position that we wanna take, mm -hmm. um, that can't come just a week or two in front of the the, uh, the ballot timing. Exactly. Okay. And, um, you know, I just captured four uh, main action items coming out of this, aside from, you know, the general subcommittee updates. Um, one is to have at each of our meetings, so we'll add it to the agenda, the updates on the fire station and the other city solar sites. Um, the second was inviting the speaker from the schools. 
Um, the third is to look into how we want to um, identify the transportation plans um, where we would weigh in on the energy or climate impact. And then the fourth is to um, uh, have the city work with the Rolling Sculpture Car Show to uh, look at opportunities to add EVs. Cool. Anybody have anything else that I missed? Okay. All right. Well, do we have a motion to adjourn?